Hi everybody. Today I'm bringing you the Edmund Dulac Tarot. One thing I'm grateful for in time of the coronavirus, if everything else stops, the Amazon man still gets through. Brought this and another deck in the mail today. Now I'd say, <clears throat> although the boxes, the box got a little bit dinged up, but that's kind of par for the course with Amazon and those uh, padded bags. Um, <clears throat> I would say that this is for uh, folks, this is Los Garabeo. This is for folks who like uh, classic uh, art and decks like the John Bauer, the Arabian Nights Tarot, and... Um, Arthur Rackham, you know, traditional uh, art, the art from the golden age of illustration from the late 1800s to early 1900s. I don't have any of those decks, but this is in that same vein. It apparently is out of uh, copyright because these look to be uh, original artwork from Edmund Dulac, whereas a lot of the so-called art decks or artist decks from Los Garabeo uh, often are inspired by artwork from famous artists, but actually drawn by other people. Now, I had this open earlier, and looks like I might have damaged my little white book but the little white book is actually standard um, there's a couple of pages about Dulac and then you know a very short paragraph with keywords for each of the cards running a total of about 20 21 pages and then it goes on into a couple of other languages uh, <clears throat> this also looks like it's going to go very well with my uh, John Waterhouse Oracle deck um, this is the advertising card and that's the backs very nice back design one of the reasons I actually got this um, Lately, I've started modifying decks, trimming borders, mostly because I have a couple of decks or had a couple of decks with keywords on them that I didn't find helpful. And so I got into border trimming. But this deck, actually, when I saw the walkthrough, I almost, I sort of bought this deck because I like the borders. They're really exquisite I think and I love how um, Los Garabeo or Los Garabio as most some pronounce it I love how they've graduated uh, to just number or symbol borders and away from the um, written ones in multiple languages this way many different people from different countries can get these decks and they all know a common language if they know tarot that they don't need something that says for instance the fool on the card they know that the zero indicates the fool now these numbers and symbols are also helpful to me because in not in every case are the images readily identifiable as that card? They're all beautiful artwork, but um, and they all can be read intuitively. But they are just lifted from uh, fairy tale book illustrations. Um, so anyway, let me walk you through them. Some of them may look rather familiar. 
Some of them are a little bit dark, and some of them don't look, you know, highly focused, probably, on screen. I've, I've seen another walkthrough or two and thought, oh, these are not very sharp. They actually look sharper in color. I mean, <laughs> in person. So, um, yeah, when I'm looking at them in front of me under light, the images seem a little better defined than they do um, on screen. And these are from paintings. I don't know how the paintings were done. Like I said, the golden age of illustration. And um, they have a, a lot of atmosphere in many of them. Some of them are a little on the dark side. But all are seeable. They also remind me of some of the images from the uh, the Decadent Dream Tarot, which I have. And many of those are very dark and hard to read or hard to see. These are beautiful cards, so if you like, you know, late 18th century fairy tale type art depictions. This is a deck for your collection, I think. There's one with a genie. I don't know if that's from Aladdin or the Arabian Nights. It looks like um, there are several culture reference stories in these uh, images. Some of them look like they are from the Arabian Nights. And um, I'm not sure whose illustrations were used in that deck, whether there's any crossover here or not. Some of these look um, like they're from uh, Japanese fairy tales. Some look traditional English fairy tale. Some are very spiritual, like that. It looks, looks like a symbolist painting. Now we go into the, uh, the miners. Curious as to what you think of these borders. I actually like them and um, we'll leave them on. If you trim, if you decided you didn't like the borders and wanted to trim them off, you'd have a little trouble in the back. You'd be cutting into the tops of these horse heads. Unless you don't care what the backs look like. But like I said, I, I like the ornate quality and the color in these borders. It looks to be a very, very dark brown, almost a black, with a kind of a beige to yellow spiral um, design. I like spirals anyway. Very vine-like design in the borders. I thought at first this was Hansel and Gretel, but it must be another story. There's only one little girl there, and the house doesn't appear to be made of candy. That looks like it might be. There's another genie. Well, I don't know if that's Aladdin or some other tale. The genie in it. A lot of the cards have a moodiness to them, sort of a melancholy, which again reminds me of the John Waterhouse deck. Sort of sober and thoughtful imagery. like so.
Some are a little harder to make out. I was looking at this one. I can't tell. There's a creature on the right with a fish's body and human arms. It appears to be a mermaid, but for the life of me, I can't quite make out where the face is. I need to get out a magnifying glass. Okay, that one we know, the princess and the pea, if you know that fairy tale. Some of them are very romantic images. So it's funny, my taste has kind of shifted. This is typical of a deck I would have been obsessed with a, a year or more ago. I now have sort of moved away from specific taste or love of this kind of art. And the thing that drew me back, oddly enough, was the borders on these cards, which is funny. Since I just trimmed some borders off another set of cards the other day that I didn't like. We'll see how these are to work with. They feel like typical uh, Los Scarabio uh, cardstock weight and flexibility. Um, they are not glossy. There's a little bit of a sheen to them, but it doesn't seem to interfere with appreciation of the images. This is a good ten of wands. This makes me want to go have another look at the John Bauer and the Arthur Rackham uh, decks and also the Arabian Nights one. I think that one did have a very sort of an uh, excess of intricate decorative border around it which made the images smaller. This is nice that it just has a, at the top and the bottom strip, you know. So they're virtually borderless cards, really. I mean, <laughs> because the image runs to the left and right edge of the card. I wonder what direction Los Garabio will go into next. I mean, they on the majors, they do have the same number on the top and the bottom. And they could very well eliminate the top one by just including the number with the symbol at the bottom. Although I kind of like the, the central symmetry on these. And I don't mind a double border. 
but you know, let's see where they go with them. I'm just so glad that they've graduated away from the the six languages, you know, that they put on had been putting on their cards. I still have a deck that I love that, you know, I have trouble with despite the languages because they're they're not even at the top and bottom, they're down one side. So you, you can't trim it off because the backs are lined up, so it'd be uneven. So and there's the last card. There was a, a you know an ad card in there too. So that's the Edmund Dulac Tarot. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you like the Edmund Dulac? Really, you do? Okay, enough cornball humor. See you all soon.